Hi, welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson, and today the basket we're going to work on, I've called Kelly's Market Basket. It's a basic market basket pattern. We've added a trellis on the side using some dyed number two round, which goes up into the border at the top. A nice little basket for a gift or just make it for yourself. The material that you're going to need to make this ba basket is as follows. You're going to need one eight by 12 D handle, half inch flat, leave it in natural, cut eight pieces 24 inches long, also cut seven pieces 25 inches long. You're going to need several lengths of number two round reed, left natural. You're also going to need number two round reed, dyed pink, or you pick out your color, whatever you choose. And from the dyed reed, cut 32 pieces 35 inches long. Okay, before we get started, I want to talk about your handle a little bit. This is a D handle because of the shape, that's why it was named. And most D handles are going to come unfinished, most handles are in fact. I use three different grades of a sanding pad and sand it down real good first. I've already done mine, but I want you to sand this down using two or three different grades. And then I put a basket oil on it and that just brings out the, the wood tones and makes it look really, really pretty. And this is a, just a t-shirt, an old t-shirt, and you're just going to rub that on there, inside, outside, on the edges, all over. And that's really going to make a nice handle for you. Okay, let's put this oil away. And we're going to need a pencil and a tape measure because we're going to mark the center of the D handle. So get it to stand up. Find the center. It's an 8 inch base and 12 inches high. So I'm going to find the center and I'm going to mark that at 4. And just put a little pencil mark on there. Also put a pencil mark at a half inch on each side. So I've got a half inch mark from here to here, about a half an inch. Okay, now I've already cut my pieces. And don't forget, we're going to have to mark these for this pattern on the wrong side. And there's a right and a wrong side to the reed. The right side is smooth, the wrong side is rough. Line up your ends. Just put a pencil mark up here as you draw it up to your finger. You're going to put all seven pieces. These are the seven pieces at 25 inches long. And we're going to lay them underneath a spoke weight. Lay the tips under there. I have a crooked piece here. I'm going to go ahead and use it. If I had the time and was working on my own, I might go ahead and replace that piece. Reed is a natural grown fiber. Um, it comes from overseas and it grows crooked sometimes. So you're going to find some pieces in your, in your reed that are going to be crooked. Like I say, you might want to replace this one here. After I get that in, I'm going to treat my handle as a spoke at this point and weave it right in. So I have one under and over, under, over, all the way across. Now you're going to take your other pieces. You have eight pieces cut at 24 inches. I've already marked the centers to save time. My wrong side is up. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to weave this under my first one and then over, under all the way across. And that handle's going to slide on me, so you're just going to have to hold it up there. I'm going to draw it in. My spacing is going to be a half inch apart, so I want to make sure I leave at least a half inch, if not a little bit more. That'll give me room to go back and do some measuring on this one. And all I'm doing is working these in. I'm not concerned right now too much with my spacing until I get all my pieces in because as I put new pieces in they just kind of get messed up anyway. Work this through. Because I have eight pieces, my handle makes the center piece. I'm going to weave four on either side. And it's just a basic over-under pattern, sometimes called a basic basket weaving pattern, or it's also called plaiting too. Almost finished. I can remove my spoke weight now. It served its purpose. And one more to go. Okay, doesn't look like too much now, but we're going to come in and do some spacing. I have a half inch piece here. 
I'm just going to cut off an end. You might want to save a scrap piece for this. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to space this. Pull it tight. And come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Now I need to space my vertical pieces here and, and this edge right here where I made that line I want this edge of the reed on that line on my half inch mark same thing on the other side because my center mark is right here I want my center piece to be right down the middle and these two I'm just going to come in here and eyeball now I want you to take four clothespins and clamp off the corners like this and that's just to hold it all together and tell we you know why we're working with it and as we come to the clothespins, we're going to go ahead and remove them. Take out a piece of your number two round reed, and I've got mine soaking, and this is a piece that's natural. And we're going to put a crimp on it, so about halfway, make, or really I want you to have two different end lengths here. Come up here, and with your needle nose pliers, you're going to put a crimp on it, and it's just a squeeze, and that's going to break down those fibers so that'll bend without breaking. I like to take the spoke that is under and I pick the one that's away from the corners. So this is a good one to start and because I'm weaving to the right, I'll end up over here. It'll give me lots of room to end it. This is twining. We've done this in the past, but I just want to refresh your memory on this. You're going to loop that over the reed and hold the one down on your right with your finger. The one on the left goes behind the next spoke. This one now becomes my right, so I'm going to change and pick this one as my left and go around. Remember we're going to have two different corners, one's regular and one's irregular. And in this type of basket we're going to have two of each. This is a regular corner, so this bottom reed is going to just come down, I'm going to hold it, take the one on my left and go around the corner. And let me show you a little trick here first. If you put a little crimp on this, everything's going to fit in nice and tight. That'll just bring that in and I have a nice tight fit there. Give your basket a turn. I know, whoops, I'm working with long pieces here and they're going to tangle on me. Again, this is on my left, so it goes around the next spoke. Now this one's on my left, and I'm just going to continue on. When I come to my handle now, I have to imagine that it's out because it has become a spoke. So I need to bring this one through. I like working with the long lengths because then I can do a lot of the base without adding. But it does tangle. Okay, the bottom one went underneath and the top one comes around and goes behind the next spoke. See how nice that works? Always picking up that left piece and taking it around the next spoke. Okay, here's an irregular corner. And if you put a little X on it right here with a pencil, It'll just remind you, once it's irregular, it's always irregular. And see how this reed slides under there? Can you see that? That, we want it to lock in. We don't want it to have that look and to slide. So I'm going to come and take my right piece around first, then bring my left piece over. And again, working with this small reed, I'm going to go ahead and put a crimp on those so they will pull tight and fit tight in there, just to make it look a little nicer. I'm going to continue weaving around, straighten out my reed. This is called twining, and it's just a basic twine here. Fit everything in tight. I'd like to get through, okay, so I can show you how to end this. I'm going to put a crimp on it again. Bring this one around. This is a regular corner. Everything worked in just, just fine. There wasn't any thing that we needed to do to that one, which means that my next corner I come to is going to be irregular. Again, here's my handle. Bring that bottom one up and through. I know I'm trying to work a little fast here so I can get through and show you everything. You can take your time and work nice and slow and do a really nice job on your baskets. Always picking up that left piece and bringing it over the right and around the next empty spoke. Now here again we have another irregular corner, so let's just mark it so we can always remember that's irregular. I'm going to come in here and crimp. 
and bring that left one around first and then go back and bring that white, right one around and continue on. Now this needs at least three if not four rows on the bottom of this basket. And what you need to do is make sure that you have enough rows to fit in this little half inch space that we gave you here. Remember we made our marks on that? If you need to crimp at your corner, go ahead and crimp again. Mine fit in real nice that time, so I'm not going to take the time to crimp it in. But whether, what will determine whether you need those, that extra row, is how everything fits together. And it could be just a fraction of an inch off and you're going to need that extra fourth row. So go ahead and put in four rows of twining. But before I quit, let me show you real quick. Let's say I ran out there, okay? I always want to run out before I get to my corner. Don't make any additions on your corner. But simply to add a new piece when you run out, lift up this piece and slide it in there about an inch and keep right on going. I hold it down so I don't pull it out, but then I just keep right on going. That's all there is to it. And we'll come back and we'll trim off this excess later when we do the trim work on our basket. I've already done that next step and I've got mine soaking. You notice that my handle slipped into my water. It's probably better not to have your handle into the water. Even though they have the new glues out, um, it's better not to. I just feel funny, you know, I'd rather see that handle not soaked because it's a wood and we don't want to raise the grain either. To end it, I simply came across here. This is the one I began on, the spoke I began on, and I ended it before, the spoke before, to the left, and I just simply cut off my ends. And then we're going to do what we call upset our basket, and that's simply bringing up the spokes and putting a bend on them, and then I like to take some clothespins and clamp these four corners together. That helps me shape the basket. Make sure you bend every one of them up and then put your four corners on. I've kind of already bent mine all up, so I'm just going to come in here and put my corners on. I wove two, pardon me, I wove three rows up with my half inch flat. And again, we have a right and a wrong side. So make sure you find your right side because that's what you want on the outside of your basket. I come back to my pattern here and because I'm under here, I want to be under my handle piece here. So I'm just going to sneak that in and it would be under this one, over this one, under and over. Oops, I have a loose piece here. I'm just going to tuck it in there. Okay, and I'm going to clamp that here. I'm going to weave it around. I kind of back wove there so I wouldn't have to take that full length around the handle. Take off my corner uh, close pin and when I get around the corner I put it back on and I leave it on for two or three rows when I'm working with half inch and that again just helps shape the basket. And I want to get a couple rows done for you here so I'm going to just weave along. It's just a basic pattern. I'm watching my corners as I come around my corner to make sure I don't pull it too tight or leave too much reed in there so that it would be a loose corner. I want it to just come nicely around the corner. Again, I have a long piece here, so I have to take a minute and work it underneath the handle. Okay, bring this one up. And feel free to use some close pins in here too to help hold this together while you work. They're just temporary and it's going to help you get that shape on. In this first row, there is just nothing to hold this first row together, so we need to use those extra pins to help with that. And again, watch your corners. I'm back to where I began. If I wove correctly going around the basket, when I come back to where I started from, I will be right on top of that. If you, don't work, if you didn't come out this way, you know you made a mistake somewhere along that when you were weaving. Okay, weave right on top of where you began. Come in here, and I'm going to hide this in. We want to overlap four. If this is one, two, three, I'm going to hide underneath my handle. So that piece is going to hide right under there. I cut it just a little bit shorter than the, the width of the handle. 
and I'm going to just hold those together. Now because we have that overlap there, let's turn the basket over and start the next row of weaving on the other side of the handle. You can even start on the ends if you like. Okay, I'm going to clamp there. I'm going to go ahead and weave another row around for you. If it starts holding itself together, you can leave those corner close pins off and just put in other ones. It usually takes a couple of rows, sometimes three rows, to hold it all together. And be real cautious of your corners again. I know I've said that, but you can't say it too many times, I guess, because it's important to keep them nice and neat. Over, under, basic basket weaving pattern. This row is much easier to do than the first row was. Everything is just falling into place very nicely here. Oh, got a little bit of water in the eye there. Come back around, overlap four, and straighten everything out. This pass basket pattern goes up real easy. It's a nice one to make if you need a gift in a hurry. And it really, this pattern here is really elegant with that colored, that dyed reed on the top. Okay, kind of look at it, make sure it's taking on a good shape, and go ahead and start that third row. And again, you'll see me kind of cheat in here and back weave a little bit. It's so much easier to work that around that handle piece. After you get your three rows woven, and I'm on my third now, I'm going to weave with the number two round again. Let me see, I'm going to take just a minute to get this started because, or to finish this. I'm going to cut this off. I know I'm going to give myself some length, but then I won't have to work that whole length under the handle. That was a really long piece of reed. Okay, I'm working quickly because I want to show you how we're going to start the sides of the twining up the sides. Okay, and then I have to overlap four. After you get this row done here, then I want you to pack everything in real tight. Pack everything in tight. Take another piece of number two round, and remember we're going to put a crimp on it, and we're going to loop it starting anywhere on an under weave and go ahead and weave three rows of twining. Now when you work on the sides like this, you will not have your corners. You simply weave around the corners. You will not have any regular or irregular corners. So go ahead and weave three rows of twining and ending it just like I showed you earlier. Okay, after you have your three rows done, then I want four, uh, pardon me, five more rows of half inch and then four rows of twining at the top. It's just a repetition of what you've been doing. And I've already started to tuck in these pieces. I've got my basket weaving tool here. Um, I'm trying to get this so I can show you what I've done. We're going to come in here and I'm going to tuck in this piece. Because we have twined on the top of the basket, we're going to tuck every one of our spokes in. I'm going to pick this up. Oh, let's weave it under here. I'm going to put it underneath there and get it to bend. Okay, this one's already cut. Some of these I've already pre-cut. Okay, this one I didn't. So this one I need to come in here and I'm measuring the length. I don't have to cut or tuck in all that length. So I'm going to cut that much off and I only have to hide the ends under a couple. I like to go a couple, especially when I'm not going to put a firm rim on this basket. And I like to cut, tuck down into a couple of rows because that just holds it a little bit tighter. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you how to do that rim. It's real easy, it's real basic. I've used some pink in here. Mine's been soaking. I'm going to take one of these long pieces and I'm going to start here on the side and gently lift up your twining here and the one right next to it. I'm going to lift that up 
and slide that one in. Now you notice I didn't put them all the way up. I'm going to come back here and put this side in, my right one in first, because I'm always going to cross my left on top of my right. And then give this a pull. And I leave that loop at the bottom of right on that one right here. Can you see how I've left that loop? And that's going to be a good measurement for me all the way around the basket. Put in the next one, it goes right next to it, so I have two up in every one of these. Um, underneath the twining there will be two pieces coming out. Bring this one across first, my white one across. Just be consistent. If you wanted to reverse the pattern that would be fine, just be consistent. I'm always taking my left on top of my right. Bring up the ends and pull them up together so we get it in there even and it's centered. I pulled a little bit too much, so just come back here and pull it down a little bit. Work the pattern all the way around the basket, repeating it, just repeating what I did, and this is going to make your trellis. This one I already have done, and I want to show you when you get done, you will have two coming out of the top of every one of your spokes. You'll have two of your, your dyed um, number two round. Okay, beginning anywhere, you're going to take the two together, keep them straight, laying on top of each other, and you're going to go behind the next spoke to the right and out. So I'm going behind and out. Behind and out. Okay, I'm going to work this pattern quickly so I can show you the next step. I've actually done this step uh, it's called a two-step braid, and we're doing it twice. The second time it seems a little bit different because it's laying on its side. When you get to the last one, you're going to straighten them out, and they're going in right here. Can you see that? I hope my arm's not in the way. And I'm going to put it right through there. Okay? Go back and make sure they're all about the same height. Again, starting anywhere, we're going to take two spokes, together as one and pull up this one and slide it in that hole right next to it. You see that hole that was created from our first loop? You're going to work that all the way around. Make sure they're laying side by side. If they get twisted, you can go back and readjust them. And you're going to work that all the way around the basket. I'm working on the outside of the handle here. Okay, just do some adjusting. This one I'm going to bring in cross, in, across in front of the handle. I want to work this a little bit around. Okay, continue working that pattern all the way around the basket. Then come inside here, and all of your spokes, when you get that done, will be inside. For time's sake, I'm going to come in here and show you real quickly this last step. It's a two-step braid done on its side. So you're going to pick up the two and you're going to go behind the spoke to the right and to the outside. Can you see how I'm going to have all these pieces now sticking back on top of my basket, sticking up there? Work that pattern all the way around. I'm going to pin it here because you're going to go ahead and take that pattern all the way around. And then come back here and again take, pick up two here, take Pull out the one in front of it, and the two here are going to slide down. We're working two, a pair, and it's going to, as one. So this is one spoke. Pull this out and slide it in there. Pull this out and slide it in there. And when you get all done, go back and make sure everything is laying side by side. Everything is adjusted and, and looks real pretty and neat. Okay, let's say I finished that out. We're going to pretend I did that. Then you're going to have all these spokes. See, here's one twisted. I really would need to take the time and go back and make sure everything is laying nice and flat and together. When you get that all done, then you're going to come in here and you're going to pull this out just gently and snip it off. And that's going to hide those cut-ins right underneath your braid so people aren't going to see that and just go ahead and trim them all around just that way. 
when you finish this part, when you do that braid twice, then you're going to end up with your braid looking like this. And time to get your trim work and everything done. A very simple, easy basket, really quick, but yet it looks elegant. Next week we're going to be working on this basket here. And this is a really nice little basket, has some side handles on it, kind of like a little harvest basket. And I'm going to really look forward to seeing you then. Take care. We'll see you next week. Thank you.